Right, now let's think about a bit harder about those pictures I was drawing of some of the functions at the beginning. Because I drew things like, here's one set of things, and here's the other set of things, and maybe this is a function that's from this set A to that set B, and I said that maybe this one goes here, and that one goes there, and maybe that one goes there. And one of the most important facts about functions is that nothing was allowed to go to outside the set on the right, right? We're not allowed to have something here going over there. That's definitely not allowed. So another thing is that we're not allowed to have points over here that don't go anywhere. So everything over here has to go somewhere over there. But here are two things that are allowed. We are allowed to have lots of points over there going to the same point over here, right? We're not allowed to have one point over here going to two different places over there, right? But we are allowed to have lots of points over here going over there. So let's write down some features that we are allowed. So we, we are allowed uh, many points on the left going to one point on the right. Whereas we're not allowed we're not allowed one point on the left going to many points on the right. One point on the left going to many points on the right. That's not allowed. Okay? Now another thing we are allowed is we are allowed some points on the right that do not get hit. So we're allowed points on the right that do not get hit. But we're not allowed to have points on the left that go nowhere. So we're not allowed points on the left that go nowhere, and we're not allowed points on the left that go outside the right. Okay, so these are the things we are allowed, and these are the things that we aren't allowed. And so one thing we might ask ourselves is when any of these things actually occur. So do we have many points on the left going to the same point on the right? And do we have any points on the right that do not get hit? And these are two important properties of functions that it's good to look at. And um, in fact, if this, if this never happens, it's when these don't happen that we give them names. So when this does not happen, we say it's injective, and when this doesn't happen, we say it's surjective. So before I write down those definitions properly, let's have a look at some examples. Right. Um, so the first example of a function we had just now was first example we had was we had the set A being 0, 1 and B being 0, 1, 2, 3 and we have a function going from A to B given by F of A equals A plus 1. Okay? So we can draw this like this. Here's 0 and 1. Here's 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now 0 is going to go to 1. 
and 1 is going to go to 2. So let's have a look. Are there many points on the left going to one point on the right? Well, no, because both of these points go to completely different places. So um, let me call this A and call that B. So does A occur? No. What about B? B says, are there points on the right that do not get hit? And the answer is, yes, there are points on the right that do not get hit. Right? Because 0 and 3 do not get hit by anything. OK, so what this means is it's going to be something called injective and this one means we're not surjective. Whereas, if I had put another point in here, if we'd added some things in here that did go over to the right-hand side to 0 and 3, then we could have been injective and surjective. So I'd better now write down what these definitions are properly. So, let's have some definitions. So, let's see. Given a function f from a to b is called injective if Informally, nothing on the right gets hit twice. Nothing on the right gets hit more than once. I think I'm going to rub this allow and not allow thing off now. Nothing on the right gets hit more than once. I'll write the informal definitions up first. That's what injective means, and surjective means everything on the right gets hit. So let's now write up the formal definition of these things. So nothing on the right gets hit more than once. The way that we actually say it is we say for all, we say that if, if f of a equals f of b, then a had to equal b. Perhaps I should use different letters. So this says, uh, formally this means f of a1 equals f of a2 implies a1 equals a2. And the formal definition of surjective means for all elements in the right-hand side, there exists an element in the left-hand side such that f of a is that element in the right-hand side that we started with. Now, in the next video, I'll explain a bit more what these very formal-looking definitions do.